it's that time again. Haven't touched it since we were last together. <laughs> As you can see. Oh man, it's um it's been it's been one of those weeks, you know? Oh. And now the kid decides it's time for her to get a shower. Okay. Well, we will just have to work with it. Um anyway, so how are you? Hello. Um hang on, let me pick a color here. What's F? Was not prepared again, but we went over that already, right? How I wasn't a Girl Scout. Uh, F, F, F. Where's the F? There's the F. Okay. Alrighty. So, not too many new developments in my world since we were last together. But... Did everyone notice that Jenny at the Uncrafty Crafter and Abigail over there on Abigail's Diamond Painting Magnificence, I'm just kidding, that's not her channel name. I don't know her channel name, but it's Abigail something. <laughs> Diamond Painting with Abigail. Um, both of those wonderful ladies hit 1,000 subscribers. That is so awesome I'm so happy for them I mentioned it not long ago that they were both so close and I knew they were gonna get there really soon but I mean it's like I blinked and BAM it happened for them you know which is just amazing so huge congratulations to both of those wonderful ladies um, if you haven't already checked them out you know go check them out because they're pretty awesome in my book you know and apparently they're pretty awesome in at least a thousand other people's books. So, you know, it's worth it's worth some time for you. So, anyway, um, let's see. Not much here for me other than, you know, work and work. Yeah, pretty much. That, that, that sums it up, work. Um, my company just did some realignment of sorts and selling off of part of the company and all the stuff that goes with it and um, it's kind of you know high stress a lot of pressure and things of that nature but you know we work together as a team and we get through it right um, mm, the most exciting thing for me this week well Maybe not the number one most exciting thing, but pretty close to the top is uh, on Tuesday nights there is a blank drop from a particular pen blank maker that always sells out so fast. It's like within seconds it feels like as soon as their stuff is listed. So I was on my phone like two minutes till till it was time and I just kept refreshing until the stuff started popping up I, I ended up placing three separate orders because you know I didn't want to get cart snatched because you know that's not fun um, and spent too much money of course as I always do but it's all in my efforts to find the most beautiful blanks for our customers and, um, you know, trying to keep things going over here for us. It's, uh, it's kind of hectic and crazy, but, you know, putting feelers out and finding out what people are looking for the most and what sells good. And, like, some things that I thought would sell really good didn't really sell good. Well, I, I said didn't sell good. They didn't sell quickly. And then... Other things that sold very quickly, I wasn't figuring would be that quick. You know what I mean? It's like I, the opposite. That's why it's so hard for me to pick out 
um, colors and things when we are making our own pen blanks because what I like not everybody else likes or it's not what they're looking for or they've already got something like it and they want something different you know it's just so hard to know what to do <laughs> um, and right now things are kind of uh, they're a little bit crazy we're, we're very thankful for but it's a little bit crazy um, we might have to reel things back in just a little bit and um, for a little period of time maybe go back to how we were first doing things um, well maybe not quite that way when we first started we would just make pins and put them up for sale and some of them it took over a month to sell you know because they just weren't that desirable I guess and then we started you know with the customs and seeing what everyone might want and taking or doing their requests and seeing if we could meet what they were looking for and all that kind of thing which is how we're doing a lot of it today um, we still have a custom sign up post and and it's still way backed up every time that I go up there and look it's like there's two or three more added to it um, I had turned off the comments because we're behind and we need to get caught up but um, then that kind of backfired because by turning off the comments some of the people that I needed to communicate with couldn't comment back to me and you know not everybody knows how to use Facebook Messenger um, they don't know how to go and find their other messages which is that's a folder on Facebook that everyone has where anytime somebody that you've never exchanged private messages with before or you're not friends with them the messages that they may send you go to this other folder and used to it was right there on the main screen where you would see it but when Facebook changed some things they kind of hit it a couple of screens into the platform so you have to know where to go to see them and a couple of times I've had to try to explain and walk people through the process of how to find these other messages so that we can communicate. <clears throat> and then, you know, there's what's going to usually happen sometimes, no matter what type of business you're in or anything like that, but people are going to comment that they want something and then by the time you get around to doing it, and you, you know, you reply to their comment, you know, they don't get back to you. Um, one today, I try, I've been trying to get up with her for two weeks. And, you know, I kind of just hate to keep spending my time on that. You know, because we've got so much else we need to do. I need to keep moving forward, you know. Um, and I hate it because it... it it's, I mean, they're going to miss out, but it's not fair to anyone else that might be there and be present, just, you know, patiently waiting for their turn. So, it, it it's hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Um, we actually had someone that um, got in on a blank drop that we did um, last week. Or the week before. But anyway, um, she selected a blank and we turned it for her and everything. And I commented with the picture and she never got back to me and never got back to me. So I was like, what in the world? So I went to check and kind of follow up. And I noticed that for some reason when I, re you know, when you reply to somebody... It automatically tags their name so they get a notification that they've got something they need to look at. 
Well, I was like, huh, for some reason, it didn't tag her. It took the tag of her off. So, let me comment again. This looks like I screwed up something. So, let's just do it again. So, I, I commented again, tagging her, asking her to look at the pin and, you know, let me know if she liked it. Well, so I did that and I got out of it and then went back in and looked at it again and the same thing had happened. It had untagged her name. So I was like, what in the world is happening here? So I was like, I just need to send her a direct message because this thing's broken. <laughs> so I clicked on her profile so I could go send her a message and her profile wouldn't come up. I was like, what is happening? I was like, is my Facebook just not connecting? Is it being extra special for me right now because that happens sometimes sometimes I can't see anything it just sits there and spins and gives me blank pages when I know there is stuff there to look at so I just figured it was on my end messing up so I went to another person's um, comment and clicked on their name to go to their profile and it went straight to their profile. So I was like, uh-huh. So it's not my phone. It's something with that profile. And all I could do was just assume that maybe they decided to get off of Facebook and re deleted their profile. So here I am sitting here. I've got a pin that this person specially requested. And we've turned it for her. And she's not here for me to complete the transaction. So I'm stuck with this pin. I didn't have any other choice but to just put it up in our shop to be sold. And it sold rather quickly. So the pin's gone. It's on its way to its new home, if it hasn't gotten there already. Um, then yesterday, it was either yesterday or this morning, I'm sitting around, you know, I'm working for my full-time job and... My phone dings, and I'm like, okay, well, let me go take a break, check this out, see what it is. And it's a private, or it's, a, it's an instant messenger from Facebook. And it says, um, basically it was her, and I can't remember exactly what her wording was. I didn't understand her first message. It wasn't, like, I didn't understand the wording she was using, but she was just telling me that she had deleted her Facebook but then remembered that she had wanted to buy a pen from us. And I thought to myself, oof. <laughs> so I explained to her, I was like, yeah, when I, after I couldn't get up with you after several attempts, we couldn't hold on to the pen any longer since I didn't know what was going on. So we put it up in the shop and it sold. And after that, I didn't hear back from her. So I don't know. If she's upset or if she deleted her Facebook again, I, I don't know. But, I mean, really? I I don't have the time and the resources to hunt people down. Um, it's not fair to me and it's not fair to our other customers, really. Um, because there are so many of, like, the, when we do the pick a blank, so many of them... Of the blanks that multiple people want but we only have one to offer at a time and you know the, if the person that claims it disappears it's just not fair all around so we still got some work to do to get all this figured out I'm trying to make it as fair as possible but as I am quickly learning um Fair is not easy uh, by any by any means. So, um, that's mostly what I did this week is trying to juggle things and get stuff handled and situated. And it's just been kind of crazy. But on my lunch break today, I did go ahead and call and set up an appointment for Edward and I to have our taxes done by a CPA this year. Um, in the past, we've just done it on our own, you know, TurboTax or whatever. It's been fairly simple and straightforward. 
tax return, not really a whole lot going on there. Just, um, you know, our W-2s and the information for the house, mortgage interest and that stuff. And that's it, really. So, really, really easy. But this year, I'm so out of my realm I don't even know where I would begin to try to do it on my own. Um, I've got a little box that is full of paper. The box, it's like, it's like this tall. It's like four or five inches tall. And it is crammed full with papers, receipts, documentation, and all, all the things. And the sad thing is, it's probably not all of the stuff. <laughs> um... So, I was telling Abigail earlier, I was like, I'm kind of terrified, actually, this year. Um, I'm terrified that we've screwed something up and done something wrong, and we're going to owe, like, $100 million to the IRS. Um, you know, the IRS is one of those places that you don't fool around with. Like, they will take your life if you owe them money, okay? Okay. And I do not want to be indebted to the IRS. Um, I don't want them. I don't want them in my life any more than they already are. Like we're on a. What's the word I'm looking for? Like we're in a relationship, but we're seeing other people. You know, <laughs> we're serious, but we're not that serious. Like they take my money every week or every paycheck, but I don't complain about it too much. <laughs> Oh my goodness, where's my two dots? I need my two dots. Where is that color? Oh my goodness, is it in one of these baggies? No. Where's the two dots? I need this symbol right here. It's the two dots. Oh, pfft. right there in front of my face. Oh goodness gracious. So, Kendall was home today. Uh, she goes into school Thursday and Friday. And on Saturday, she's going to go see a, a good friend of hers. I don't know if they say that they're best friends anymore or not. They used to. But anyway, um, going to go to her house on Saturday. And she says she's probably going to spend the night. Which Edward and I were like, yeah, that's fine. Just let us know what's going on. And as long as her mom's going to be there, it's cool. And Kendall, you know, she's 15, okay? She's, she's got the 15-year-old attitude. And if you know what I mean by that, then you know, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, she's the, like talking to me, you know, comes off as like I'm dumb. So when I said her mom's going to be there, she's like, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm just saying. I didn't know. I'd be a pretty shitty parent if I didn't at least ask. But, I know that's just, that's just the thing. That's just her being a teenager. Because, I remember. I did the same thing to my mom, I'm sure. Um, what is that? Hashtag. I got one of those and one of those. I gotta take out the whole thing. Um, so, I don't know. Well, with her being gone, Edward and I aren't gonna be able to leave the house and do anything together. So, I don't know what we're going to do. Probably not much of anything. If I keep on like I've been going, I'm going to end up um, finishing watching some of the TV series I've been binge watching. They're not new. They're older shows that I just never completely watched. One of them is Bones. Um, that's the show we watch an episode or two of when we go get in bed for the night. That's what I unwind and relax to to get comfortable and drift off to sleep. <laughs> A show about murders and death and stuff. But hey, I mean, I can't help it. That stuff relaxes me. But um, the other show I watch when, while I'm working during the day and some of y'all some of y'all probably have watched it, and maybe you liked it. Some of you are probably like, 
That is, you know, terrible. <laughs> but it's a show I wasn't allowed to watch while I was growing up. Where is this one? Why can't I find... Um, but I'm watching, uh, Beverly Hills 90210. And I've got a few observations. <laughs> I'm just, okay, first of all, it's horrible acting. Absolutely horrible. I'm like, and these kids, like, these, these people were that successful for that long, and they really are terrible at this acting. Now, I don't know if this was early on in all of their careers or whatnot, but... Okay, well, maybe not all of them, but some of them were just god-awful. Like, I could be better. Um, but some of, I mean, I don't, I don't know. That's just my opinion. And I can kind of see why I wasn't allowed to watch that show growing up, you know, because all the sex and stuff, right? Um, my mom is a very, very conservative person, so. And plus, uh, we didn't have cable, so, even if we had cable, I wouldn't have been able to watch it. Or wouldn't have been allowed to watch it. But, um, I'm just sitting here like, okay, well, let me try to get past the bad acting. And see if I can get into this show. And some of the storylines, yeah. Or, I mean, it's, it is pretty relatable. Some of the stuff. Some of it, not so much. Um, never thought I'd say that about a show about rich kids in Beverly Hills, but I guess they're humans too, and they go through some of the regular teenage stuff. Not um, necessarily all the same, but like the getting dumped by a boyfriend type stuff, you know. It all sucks for everybody. Um, I'm at the part now where Brenda just got back from being in Paris for the summer, and her, you know that whole big old fighting back and forth with her parents about her them not wanting her to date Dylan anymore. And I'm thinking, okay, she's really acting out. Well, she's the one that screwed up in the first place. She lied to her parents and was sneaking out and doing all this stuff that she knew she shouldn't have been. And this is after, after she had that whole pregnancy scare thing, right? And her parents got over that and they were still like, yeah, okay, you love your boyfriend, all right, that's cool, keep dating him, that's fine. We, we're glad you learned your lesson now. But she still kept on and, you know, like, pushing the boundaries, like, over and over and over. And it's like, she didn't even tell her boyfriend that her parents didn't know that they were going where they were going. They were going out of the country. But anyway, it's like, and then she gets pissed at them because they don't want them to see each other anymore. I'm like, chick, you brought this on yourself. You know? But now there's the whole thing. The drama starting up with with Dylan and Kelly. They were doing all this kissing stuff while Brenda was gone. And it's just drama. And I'm like, okay, well, this is satisfying my thirst for the drama. I'd rather it be from a TV show than in real life. Okay? So, it's serving its purpose, I suppose. So, yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> what I do during the day. I watch Beverly Hills 90210 and do my day job. <clears throat> Maybe I like it so much because I really don't have to pay that close of attention to it. Like, within about the first 10 or 15 minutes of the show, I can figure out what's going to happen in the episode. I'm like, hmm, okay. This one's going to sleep with that one. Or that one's a bad dude and he's going to cause some trouble. Or somebody's going to start drinking again. Or this one's going to find out she's pregnant. You know, I pretty much can figure it out. That's, you know, but when was this show on? Back in the early 90s? Oh, I was much too young to be watching it while I was on the air then. Anyway, I was only like 11 or 12. So, I would say my parents did good not having that as something that I could watch. <laughs> totally not appropriate. Oh, my goodness. So, 
sorry. Allergies again. Don't you just love it? We had one day this week that it was so warm here that I actually had to go and put on shorts. Um, North Carolina is lovely, but ridiculous. <laughs> it's February. It's supposed to be cold. Um, but Edward and I did take advantage of the warm and got some work done out there with bacon blanks because it's just, we got to take our chances when we got them, you know? It's true that, that with anything, I, I suppose. <clears throat> but I think we're, we're, we've been together so long because of this whole pandemic and everything. I think we're really getting on each other's nerves at this point. Um, but I don't, I don't know, because he doesn't listen to me like it's bad. Um, if y'all have watched any of the clog videos, you know, he's talked a little bit before about this video game that he's into. And I swear, I really do feel like a, like his boss and a mean one at that because like, he'll, okay, he thinks he's slick, right? All right. He'll come in like he has to use the bathroom and then he disappears for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and I'm sitting there to myself like, I know he is not really using the bathroom. He is in there playing his damn game. And sure enough. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like that sometimes. Which, I mean, bless his heart, he probably just wants to warm up a little bit. But he also just, you know, wants to find out what's happening in the game since he's in charge. And let me tell you what, there's just, there's some drama there too. People, people take online games way too serious. Way too serious. There's like all these schemes and plans and plots of revenge and people dating each other through a game and getting jealous. And I'm like... Oh, my God. <laughs> drama, drama, drama. And it's bad because when he tries to talk to me about what's going on with it, I end up not listening. Does that make me a bad person? I feel like it makes me a bad person. I can't help it, though. I get so bored. It's like, dude, I don't care. Just like he doesn't always necessarily care about what I'm into, like diamond painting. <sighs> but we love each other. And we just, you know, I don't know. He, he's not so much this way, but I've always been one of those people that I like my personal space. Is he, are any of y'all like that? Do you, do you just want some of your personal space? I don't have personal space ex unless I'm in here recording a video. And then I close the door. That's the only time I close the doors when I'm recording a video. It makes me feel bad. I feel guilty. How how do you deal with the guilt? I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know. So anyway. I noticed I got a couple of thumbs downs recently. That was cool. Oh my goodness. A year ago that would have, you know, that would have bothered me more. But now it's just like, well, okay, somebody didn't care for the video. Whatever. I mean, it, I did what I did. And once it's published, I can't change it. Um, so I'm sorry that you did not find it enjoyable. Oh, I hate it when I do that pop the tray or pop the drills out of the tray but yeah so that's pretty much this week for me in a nutshell right now um working and working and not much crafting and worrying about taxes and 
Oh, yeah. Does, does that intimidate anyone else? Like the thought of you screwing up something so badly and the IRS coming after you? Like, I feel like that's a legitimate concern. I mean, shoot, even the Golden Girls had episodes where they had problems with the IRS. Stanley and Dorothy did. And um, so I know it's a thing. I know it's a real thing. But I guess maybe, maybe my deepest fear is that I'm as bad at business as Stanley. <laughs> hmm. I'm concerned, but hopefully, since I'm not in the novelty business, I'm like Stanley's the Bornack. You know, novelties like rubber dog poop or plastic vomit, you know, those type of things. Gag gifts. Um, maybe we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Oh, there's a drill. I'm just throwing the drills everywhere. Lord have the mercy. Oh, there was a couple of TV shows coming up soon. Um, and of course I can't remember the exact name. There's one that's on Amazon Prime. And it starts on Valentine's Day. It looks pretty good. It it reminds me of Groundhog Day. But it's a... It's like a romantic type show. It looks like a, there's this boy and this girl who are living the same day over and over. And something about he makes a map of all the perfect moments they had during this day. So they relive them over and over again. I don't know, but some, something happens because one of the, you know, one of the things they say in the preview is something about, it sounds like it's the girl saying something about she's upset that he didn't tell her that this was going to all come to an end. So I thought, hmm, interesting. I just hope that doesn't leave me hanging just like the Wilds did. But I'm going to check that out. It's something about um, all the perfect little things or something. Something kind of like that. But yeah. Valentine's Day on Amazon Prime. And then Kendall and I just saw this saw a preview for something on Hulu. You know what? These are the type of things I need to write down in my planner, okay? I don't need to write down business meetings or anything like that. I need to start writing down TV shows that I want to start watching. Does anybody else do that? Is that a thing? Can we make it a thing? Will some of y'all do that with me? <laughs> I think it's a good idea. Um, where's my... I've got two more colors, and then... No, I lied three because there's some of those I just had it I just had it and it disappeared on me did y'all do that oh there it is oh. I hope the pin blanks we did today come out good it's got me really worried. I'm really concerned about our business. It's a lot of pressure, man. It's a lot of pressure. And, you know, you just don't want... You don't want to let people down or upset people or anything like that, but you know, there's got to be a line drawn somewhere, right? Am I crazy in thinking that? I don't know. Where's the R? R. Sound like a pirate. There it is. Right in front of my face. Isn't that always the way? The one you're looking for. You know what I've noticed when I'm editing my videos? 
and I actually listen to the whole thing. I don't always listen to it all back. I stick my pinky out a lot. <laughs> like, like when I go do this, I'm resting my pinky right here while I'm trying to pick up a drill. And I think it's because I have so many so much trouble with my hands. I'm trying to find balance. Okay, now, now for real this time I'm on my last color. I need the T. What's the T? Or actually, no, that's not that's not right. It's not what's the T. They said it. People say what's T? Yeah, what's T? You know, like what's up? What's what's the gossip? <clears throat> We don't need no gossip around here, do we? Of course we do. Are you kidding? <laughs> That's something I'd love to understand more about myself is why, why do I want to know all of that? You know, like it has zero importance on my life. It does not add any value. Is it just purely the entertainment factor? It's got to be the entertainment factor. I don't know. I don't know, friends. Okay. So that's that section done. So that's five sections. And we're on day 122. <laughs> Lord have the mercy. All right. I've got some nightmare cards here. I picked out four. Let's see what we got. Let's do this. All right. Oh, haunted houses right out the gate. Okay. So I guess every year around Halloween time, it's a really big, really big thing, these haunted houses. Um, somewhere here in North Carolina, there's a place, that, it's a huge production every year. It's the Nightmare Factory. And I went there one year with a couple of friends of mine. And I didn't make it past the, well, no, hold on. I think technically I made it past the second room because the first thing you do when you go in is you go in and you're sitting on these benches and you watch this video. That counts as the first room, okay? And then you have to go in this next room and you're weaving back and forth through this little maze looking thing like a bunch of lab rats, which is what we were. Um... And all these noises and creepy things happening and hot air blowing on you and whatnot. And then you go out of that room and you're in a hallway to go to the next room. Which apparently is where all the fun really started. But as soon as I got into that hallway, I had a panic attack. I had to... I mean, I was curled up in the corner with my face in the corner. And curled up in as tight of a ball as I could get. Crying, hysterically, hyperventilating. It was not fun at all. I do not recommend haunted houses, okay? I can't handle them. But does anybody else like haunted houses? <laughs> I can't do them. I tried. I really tried. But I couldn't do it. They they had to get someone to come out, come get me and help walk me out. So I could get out of the building and into the fresh air. And of course, I'm sitting there in a pitch black parking lot at night. By myself, which that wasn't very smart now that I'm looking back on it. But you know who they got to come help me and, and get me out of there? Yeah, one of the people dressed up to scare the shit out of people. That didn't help. I mean, that made it worse. I mean, I ran and like pushed the guy. Okay. Anyway, enough of my bad experience. Um, But it was fun. My friend that went with me, um, she peed a little. She ran, she and her husband, that's who I went with, they ran through the rest of it. She told me she ended up pushing him out of her way, and she took off running out there, and she peed her pants. Okay, next one. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, God. Insects. Okay. Yeah, I don't like bugs. I don't like creepy crawlies. I don't like anything that flies. I don't like anything that crawls, that has six legs, eight legs, a hundred legs, a thousand legs, none of that crap. I don't like them. Ugh. Okay. Monsters under your bed. Okay. 
when I first moved into this house, I lived here by myself. And, you know, for one person, that's a lot of house. It's three bedrooms, two baths. And being in a new environment and everything and just still in the middle of some emotional turmoil. Um, it, it was pretty, pretty scary. Um, what, what happened right before I moved into this house, um, someone I dated before, um, and was planning on getting married to suddenly passed away. Um, so that's the emotional trauma and everything I was working through, but I, I was in a really dark place mentally. And part of my brain was like, I don't care, let somebody kill me, you know, whatever. But another part of me was still that, you made, you know, you need to double check all the windows and doors, make sure everything's locked. And whatever you do, don't, don't look under the bed, just get a running, running start and jump up onto the bed so they can't grab you. A lot of sense that makes, but anyway. Monsters under your bed and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> removing hair from a drink. Oh, God. And they, oh, they gave us a picture. Okay. Okay. Ooh. All right. That's a bad one. I can't stand it. I can't stand to touch wet hair. Like, even my hair that comes out in the shower, I hate Pulling it off the drain. It's so disgusting. Even though it's my hair. And it's clean. Because I just washed it. I hate it. Like if I had to go on an episode of Fear Factor. And choose between. Digging through drain hair. Or being buried. Or put in a bin with like insects. I don't know which I would choose. Because they're both like. Terrible. They're absolutely terrible to me. Okay. Uh, all right, so just to get this over with, haunted houses, absolutely can't do, I refuse. Edward and Kendall want to go to one so bad, but I, I can't do it. I, I just know I can't do it. I've offered to go with them and I'll stay in the car, but they want me to go in and I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not. I just, I can't do it. So that's the top one for me. Um, these aren't really nightmares, but. I just don't. Mm. This is tough. Um, I'm gonna put monsters under my bed. Is the last. Is these two? I mean, these two, I guess, are kind of kind of equally weighted for me. The drain hair and the insects, because I really. Okay, well, maybe the insects do belong here because they serve at least some purpose. Either they they eat other pests or their food for something else like birds okay so they have a purpose drain hair has absolutely no purpose except for making me want to vomit um but i could deal with drain hair more than i could deal with haunted houses so yeah th this is my order i'm gonna say this time but that these are all of them suck <laughs> i dislike every single one of them Ugh, it's rough okay so yeah final answer those are mine. Haunted houses, removing hair from a drain, insects, and monsters under your bed. Because I'm really not worried about the monsters under my bed thing anymore. It was just when I first moved into this house. And that was back in 2000. It was either 2004 or 2005. So it's been, well, about 17, 16, 17 years or something like that. So long enough for me to know this house is clear from the monsters. So... There we have it. That'll be the end of this whipping chat um, video for the Drilla Beasts. Hope everyone's having a fantastic week. Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks so much for joining in, me, in with me here. And um, thanks for all the lovely comments and, and um, interactions and stuff on my channel. I really am working really hard to try to stay on top of things, but I don't get my notifications, and I don't know why. Sometimes I see them pop up, but most of the time I don't. And with everything else I have going on, sometimes I, I'm really slack in going back through. I am trying to at least go through and give every every comment a heart so that you don't feel like you're, you've been ignored. Because that's the very last thing I, I want anyone to feel like. I want you to know that 
I appreciate each and every one of you that, that takes your time to watch my videos and to interact by leaving me a comment or a like or even a dislike if you must, you know. But um, you really are very important for me um, or to me. You're, well, yeah, both. You're important for me. <laughs> but you're also important to me. Um, so, yeah, I just, you know, please give me a little bit of grace where, where that's concerned because I really am trying hard. Um, it's just an area I'm struggling in. So just know that I'm working on improving. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody. And I will see you soon. Bye guys.